Rob, if you want to stop sharing, we're going to go into our first presentation. So we have um, Carrie Ann and Alexis are here to talk to us about um, the wellness kit that they created. I'm going to turn it over to Carrie Ann and Alexis. There we go. Okay. Hello, I'm gonna just make sure everyone can hear me. Yep, you're good. Perfect, okay, and everyone can see the screen? Yep, we can see it. Perfect, so my name is Alexis Hernandez and Carrie Ann is on here. I'm, I'm sure you heard her speak earlier, uh, but me and Carrie Ann put together this wellness toolkit for school personnel. As Hennessy had mentioned, uh, this will be available for everyone after our presentation, it'll be online. Um, and our goal is that this be a continuous project that's evolving. So we'll discuss a little bit about how we envision that working as we go through the presentation. We also wanna take a second to thank Mr. Steve Humber, Mr. Jesse Strazabasco, and Dr. Hannes de Lastica for their contributions to this project. They were our sounding boards and really helped us refine um, and, and create this, this toolkit. So a little bit about us. Uh, both Carrie Ann and I are doctoral students at Roberts Wesleyan College. We're working on our doctorates in clinical and school psychology. And we both were blessed with the opportunity to join this grant program as interns. Um, Carrie Ann, if you want to jump on and talk a little bit about your experience. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so um, I'm placed at Lyons Elementary School, and my supervisor is. I'll add a, um, a something before her name, amazing Casey Steiner. <laughs> she, I had the privilege of having her actually as my supervisor and my task buddy, which has been absolutely phenomenal. And my time at Lions, um, I have grown so much. You don't really have time for me <laughs> to go into all of that, but it has been a wonderful experience to not only be with her, but also to be with Bex and Lindsay, which I'll be presenting with after this, um, because we all come from different disciplines. And when we're in the office together, we can kind to bounce ideas off of each other to the betterment of not only the students but families and the community as a whole. Yeah, it's been a phenomenal experience. I've had the opportunity to be at Sodas Intermediate uh, with working with Mr. Steve Humbert. He has been a delight and if you get a chance to meet him, uh, please talk to him. He's a great resource. I, I really think he's phenomenal and I can't stop talking well about him. <laughs> also had the opportunity to work with Rochelle, who's one of the other interns. She's a social work student. Um, and I think Hennessy's desire for this to be a collaborative, multidisciplinary program really was seen. And I, I felt that we were able to do that not only amongst the um, different staff working within the school, but amongst the interns. And it was very special. I think another important feature about uh, why we both, Carrie Ann and I, are connected to this project is like about our personal interests. Both her and I are working on dissertations. Her, hers is almost completed. That's focusing <laughs> on practitioners in different fields um, and, and their wellness or um, their needs or their perspectives and perceptions on different things. So um, I think this is a natural tendency for why we felt connected to this project or the need for this project to be developed. And so we're gonna go into and share a video and then Carrie Ann's gonna discuss it a little bit. And let's see, if you can't hear it, let me make sure I'm, I've got this down correctly, hold on. Let me know if you can hear it. Yeah, we can hear. Yes, Lex.
Um, so <laughs> I get emotional every time I watch that video. <laughs> but um, so the reason why we chose that video was not only because it had students in it, but it also had school personnel. And before we got into self-care, we just wanted to add more context, you know, to what this was birthed out of. And another thing that also shines through in the video is to be empathetic to other people. But I think um, sometimes we often forget is how is someone supposed to be empathetic if they're not taking care of themselves and their own needs? And we always go into empathy but I really think the first step is self-care and self-love. And then there's more inside of you to now pour out and give to the community and the schools and their families, honestly. This isn't just a, um, a nine to five job if you work in the school systems. I've had parents contact me at eight, at nine, on the weekends. <laughs> so um, it, takes, it takes a lot. And um, to make sure that I'm serving and that we're serving um, who we've been charged to serve, we have to first make sure that that self-care piece is there. Yeah, I think um, like Carrie Ann mentioned, it's uh, one of the refrains that my mom always taught me was you can't give what you don't have. And so that I think is a guiding force for both Carrie Ann and I, like we need to make sure that what we're giving out is coming from a place of fullness and wholeness, which has to do with our wellness as professionals. And so what, how this started, this was supposed to be an email with a list of maybe two or three resources to teachers. And in a discussion with Hennessy, it became this project, which we're presenting here. Um, but it, it came about after I had a conversation with a teacher, I was going into a classroom to do a collaboration project on student behavior. And our conversation never got to the student because the teacher was pouring out how stressed and overwhelmed and um, exhausted they were, um, how much was going on in the midst of COVID and changes within the school, and then seeing the needs of students. And so I, you know, working, having worked with adults before, I just kind of put my little you know, counselor hat on and said, okay, like, how are you feeling? Did some reflection work. And then tried to bring it back to like, you know, you have support here with the school. And when I walked back to my office, I had to think about that statement, like what are what support, you know, what access to resources do they have? And so in talking with Hennessy and talking with Carrie Ann and both our supervisors, we thought about putting together just a, a access point of resources for teachers and for school personnel. I know Carrie Ann had a little bit more she wanted to add to that. Um, yes, I do. Hope you can hear me. Yeah. But before I do that, I actually um, want to add even more context to this, right? So it's, it's great when we can see a video like that, but then it's also beneficial to hear live from the mouths of people that kind of live this experience day to day. So I'm just going to share my screen. The secondary trauma that has happened to me has been in situations where I have a child share, like, you know, someone died of cancer or a child telling me that, um, you know, when he was four years old or five, he was walking home and he saw a body in the river with the throat slashed. Or I'm hearing about this kid who told me just a few days ago that got a gun pulled on him and his little sister as they were walking home from school. And how do you process that? When you're in campus and you feel safe and you go home to your home in your car where you feel safe, but then I'm sending what I call my babies out of the school because it's time for them to go home. And it's hard not to you know, if you're, if you're a caring human being, it is hard not to take 160 kids home with you every night and wonder did they make it home safely. When I was teaching, 
and I started experiencing certain STS symptoms, I would feel um, really, really exhausted. Um, I would isolate, like when it was the worst in, in one school that really didn't have that many supports. Um, I, it affected my personal relationships outside of school. When my friends or family, we would get together and they would talk about problems they had at work, like, it's so annoying the copy machine doesn't work. I would just be like, that's such a stupid thing to get upset about. You know, like, no one's being affected. Or when they would talk about problems with a boyfriend or a girlfriend, I would think, how can you even, you know, I wasn't very empathetic. Um, and I wasn't really interested in hearing about stuff like that because it became like the students just took up so much space in my head because I wasn't doing any of the self-care things that I could have done. And it just became just so big, there wasn't room in my life for anything else. So as you can see from those two different examples, and just a quick backstory, that actually was taken out from something called the STATS program, and it's embedded in the toolkit that everyone will get sent. And it's pretty much for school personnel that may be experiencing secondary trauma because of all the stories and living in the same neighborhood as some of their kids. Um, so these teachers are kind of charged with just expressing what that might look like, because sometimes it's hard to know or to put a name to what it is that is happening um, in that situation. And that's kind of another reason why we also are so passionate about this toolkit because we know that a lot of the things that the students go through, the staff also goes through, especially in the community schools where a lot of the staff live in the community. So you're seeing the same things that they're seeing as you're coming into school as well. Yes, Carrie Ann stated like with the blessings that it is to have collaboration and different organizations and agencies embedded in the school and a community that's so tight knit. There also is the impact of being that tight knit, like thinking of as just like a family structure. If a trauma happens to one, it still impacts all. So our goal is to just be curators of information to help you on your wellness journey and to help um, school personnel on the wellness journey. And part of that was kind of coming together and what can we do to help people explore where they are with their wellness. So what Carrie Ann and I, with help of Hennessy, Jesse and Steve created was this full tank activity. And Carrie Ann and I are gonna just kind of walk you through it and we're gonna answer the questions. Feel free to uh, do that work independently on your own while we talk through it. Um, we don't wanna put anybody on the spot, but we wanna just kind of explore how you could use this uh, within your own agencies and you know, even individually. So in this activity, we're kind of focusing on nurturing ourselves. So in the same way that cars need gas to drive, um, you know, we need nourishment. And sometimes that nourishment is through food and other times it's through pursuing our passions, getting rest or spending time with loved ones. And so when we have a full tank, we're at our very best. And when we're at an empty tank, you know, we need that nourishment and fuel. So to explore that, we want to look at what does it look like when my tank is full? So Carrie and I, and I have thought about these questions and we're going to answer them. So for me, when my tank is full, I have energy, I have motivation, and I have um, kind of a joyful spirit. And I feel excited and empowered. And then I'm able to complete the tasks that are on my list of things to do. How about you, Carrie Ann? For me, I have more peace, more joy, more clarity, and also more energy. Um, I also feel peace, I feel joy, and I feel motivated to do what I'm doing, and that passion kind of resurfaces. And then I am able to be more flexible, which this is a job calls for. <laughs> I am more available, not only um, in my presence physically, but emotionally as well. That capacity gets expanded. And I'm also more task-oriented. And before we um, move on throughout the activity, I just want to say that we're modeling this um, with the intent that you can find a peer um, school personnel in the school that you could kind of do this with um, every once in a while if you feel as if you need it. Yeah, or even bring it to your staff or MTSS meetings. Mm -hmm. Or if you're in an agency in your peer supervision, you can do this at the beginning of your supervision process. When my tank is empty, I need coffee. <laughs> I need rest. 
uh, and I needed to talk to someone and a friend and Carrie Ann knows this more than anyone. I usually am talking to Carrie Ann <laughs> when I'm feeling empty. And then I feel uh, exhausted. I feel that ineffective. Um, and I feel um, kind of a lot of pressure uh, to get things done when my tank is empty. What I'm able to do is pretty much not not much. You know, I feel like I'm only able to kind of vocalize that I need help when my tank is empty. And that in itself was a process. How are you carrying it? <laughs> um, for me, I need Jesus. <laughs> I need time to reorient. I need time to connect to those people that will take me for who I am and, you know, what I have to give to them, which Alexis is on that bill. <laughs> um, and then I feel all over the place and stagnant. Like I, I can't do anything. I don't want to do anything. Um, I also sometimes feel in that moment that imposter syndrome, like, what, like, what are you doing? Like, why are you in school? You don't know what you're doing. You don't know what you're doing in school. You don't know what you're doing at life. Like, you just don't know anything. And kind of just like those thoughts kind of come to you just like, oh, I don't know what I'm doing. And I'm able to do the bare minimum. And that bar is extremely low when, when I say minimum. <laughs> um, and then what the purpose of this activity is to figure out where you are now. So where am I closer to a full or empty tank? How do I feel about where I am? And what are some things that are impacting me now? Are they my control or are they outside of my control? So for me, I am probably right smack dab in the middle and I'm okay with that because I know that um, there's a process of being a grad student, um, having to present twice today, uh, not being super excited about having to be on Zoom and wishing we were all in person. Um, and those are some of the things that are impacting me now. But what I know that's in my control is that I can vocalize how I feel. I can seek time to do things that make me feel better, whether that's praying, that's reading scripture, um, being artistic and creative or going outside in the sun, even though it's freezing cold. So those are some of the things that I can do and that I know are in my control. What's out of my control? COVID. You know, I can't, couldn't control what happened this year and having to be, you know, distant and virtual. What's outside of my control is the fact that this is the end of the semester. So things are ramping up. How about you, Carrie Ann? Um, I am closer to full, as you can see. Uh, <laughs> I feel excited about where I am and the opportunities that I've had through this partnership and um, through the grant. Um, for the things that I cannot control, those are just my tasks and responsibilities. Like you have to do it. Like the reports have to get done. The dissertation has to get done. You know, you kind of have to make sure that you're doing all the things that you have to do. But I can control how I execute how I execute them, and also the things that I say to myself while I'm executing them, making sure that I'm being positive towards myself. And so the next slides explore what are things that make my tip tank empty, which Carrie Ann and I have kind of talked a little bit mm -hmm. through. And then what are some of those things that can fill my tank? So when you're working with this in a group, that might be listing it out and then sharing it, that might be doing it independently. And then, and then what you can do is as a group decide, okay, how frequently do we talk about this? Or as an individual, how often mm -hmm. am I going to reflect? And then what are some action steps that I can take? Or um, what are some areas in my wellness I want to work on? And so when you have identified that, our hope is that this, this wellness toolkit that is developed will, will be helpful in that journey. So um, we're gonna explore that a little bit right now once I can get the screen working. And it'll be again, something you can access on, on the webpage and look at with more detail and clarity. We don't want to beat a dead horse by explaining everything to you. We want this to be something you can explore. So um, when you arrive to the web, web page, you'll see that what it's about. And then you have a, a sidebar that's going to have different sections. So feel free to go wherever makes sense for you. But what we do recommend is at least looking at the wellness page. So we are breaking down wellness into eight domains. Um, and you can see in this wellness wheel, uh, spiritual, emotional, environmental, financial, intellectual, occupational, physical, and social. So these are different areas of wellness that comprise ourselves as a whole being. And instead of uh, recreating the wheel, we found wonderful resources that are available to help you explore what um, 
wellness is do some self-assessment and some activity. So every link you click, even the wellness wheel itself is gonna take you to somewhere. So the wellness wheel, when you click it, takes you to a deeper explanation if this ever loads of each dom domain. And then you have um, different assessments like the Pr Princeton University has an assessment for wellness that you can go through and also breaks the domains down further. So there's a lot of resources available here. And then another area that we suggest to look at is wellness resources broken down by domain. So we have mental wellness, physical wellness, again, listing out these eight domains. As someone who works in the mental health field, mental wellness is something I'm really interested on always. So I'm gonna show you this page here. When you go into each resource page, you're gonna have different styles of resources available. Some will have a greater depth of resources, some will have videos, some will have podcasts, but everything is linked. You can click the pictures or even the links themselves, it'll take you right there. We've got in this one in particular, crisis hotlines. We have online resources and applications that can assist you as explore mental wellness um, and a, a barrage of other different wellness resources um, or mental wellness resources. And uh, another example would be intellectual wellness. So if you're interested in expanding this area of your, or this domain of your wellness, you have access to free online courses. Um, the Harvard courses are super great. I started one that has been phenomenal about community engagement within the school environment. Um, so when you think you can't expand your knowledge or you can't afford to, there are so many free ways to do that. Um, and what we did was try to find all these resources and bring them to one single place for you. We've got applications, we've got interesting articles and books, uh, tons of different resource points for you all. Additionally, in the in the guide or in the toolkit, we have a page on self-care. You find different trackers. We're going to update our February tracker to next February's, um, where you have self-care activities, teacher-specific self-care um, assessments. We have presentations created by Carrie Ann and myself embedded into the document of uh, free activities. This free self-care challenge was, I reached out to the creator of it, uh, Marissa Redner, and she said, as long as you use this link, anyone within the county can use it. Feel free to share it as long as you share the original link. So take advantage of these resources. And then we have the stat training resource, which um, Carrie Ann kind of introduced you to through those videos. It's a phenomenal training. I suggest everyone take it. Very helpful. And then we also have um, some topics about teacher burnout. So it's a presentation we put together and Carrie Ann created some lovely time management uh, infographics that you can print out, you can share, you can add to your Google Di Drive, you can email it to all the people in your life that need to take control of their time. There are tons of resources. I had to read this about 14 times to help me with my time <laughs> management skills. Uh, Carrie Ann did a phenomenal job with that. And then we also have self-reflection activities where you'll find the full take activity we just briefly walked through, um, a resource on mindful journaling that explains not only what mindful journaling is, why it can be helpful, it has articles, research articles and online articles, and then it has a list of prompts that you can utilize to um, start your mindful journal journaling practice. And then we have video resources great TED Talks. And these aren't just videos I found and Googled and put on. I've listened to them. I've come back to them. I find them very helpful um, to kind of reorient me into wellness. And then we also have a list of podcasts that are that are super um, interesting. And I put some of my faves here um, in the picture. So I hi highly suggest them. Um, let me go back to our presentation here. There are tons of resources. We could have been here probably for like five hours going through every single thing, but we want this to be something you explore. And as I mentioned earlier, our goal, especially the goal with the grant, which is to collaborate and to increase that collaboration to help students in the community. We also don't wanna forget that staff are part of that community. So we're hoping that through the years, this continues to be updated, not only by ourselves, but by incoming interns and that it can be a continual resource that you can look to um, and share with others. And then Carrie Ann has some closing remarks. Um, yes, yeah, so for a final, um, just synopsis of everything, I say if we can get it into one, two words, it would be self-care. 
Um, it could also be self-love. So what me and Alexis would like everyone to do right now is to repeat after me. We're going to do a positive affirmation towards ourselves. Um, so the first thing we're going to say is I'm doing the best I can with what I have. So it's I'm doing the best I can with what I have. And I'm going to actually write this into the chat so it's something that you can remind yourself you can look in the mirror and say it to yourself when you're feeling down and an imposter syndrome comes yeah, creeping in down there a little bit. and just know. remember that you're doing the best you can with what you have thank you guys so much for listening to us yes we do appreciate you all we want to keep it to our time limit so if you have questions or comments we'll drop our emails into the chat we love to chat we love to talk probably why we're going to be psychologists. That's probably 90% <laughs> of the reason why. So we love to hear from you. We love your feedback. And we're just excited that this can be a blessing for you guys as you explore and engage in your wellness. Thank you, Carrie Ann and Alexis. This was so, so, so wonderful. You forgot to tell everybody, um, the lovely Steve Humbert just reminded me through text that what our meetings were called. You guys want to share what we <laughs> called our meetings? <laughs> Oh, Lexi. Oh, Lexi. <laughs> so um, we are called it the Love Farm. It was a long story of how we got there. I won't get into it, but expect some children books down the future. The Love and if Farm. You can, if you can find the Love Farm logo on our wellness toolkit, uh, maybe I'll send out a prize or something. That would be great. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Amazing, amazing work.